Hello and welcome. My name is Huey Bear 2104, bringing you another review. Today will be Battlefield 1. Battlefield 1 is the brand newest game in the Battlefield series. Very strange how it's called Battlefield 1, since not the first one. It is the 6th or 7th, I believe. Probably 10th or 11th, there's a lot of battlefields. It is called Battlefield 1 because it is set in World War 1. World War 1 started in 1914 and ended in 1918. What started was the assassination of Prince something Vietnam. Very don't know his name. Austrian Prince. And yeah, got assassinated, people got pissed off and declared war in Belgium. So yeah, that's history for you kids. But how does that history hang up with this game? Well, it does follow history quite well, even though there isn't many trench wars, because most of it were in the trenches. They dug big holes, they got their big rifles every once in a while, they pick their head out and take a shot. And if they were lucky, they got the enemy. They weren't, if, and if they were unlucky, they got a massive hole in their head. That's just their fault. Yeah, that that would suck. Yeah. A lot of people dying, about 60 million. So, let's talk about the campaign first. The campaign is a breath of fresh air, I reckon. Something swell. And transition. Just want to go past this. Oh, wow, shit. So, the campaign, it follows these war stories. There are six in them total. And some can be very long and very short. Um, which is a bit sad because even though the campaign was in Battlefield's strongest point, it did have quite ish interesting characters, Battlefield 4. But the story in this is really good. I think that the plane, Friends in Higher Places, and Free Mud and Blood, which is the tank, I really grew attached to the characters. I thought it was great, like, it was good, it was a good single player. Only problem, it didn't end long, like, it totally took me about an hour or two to finish them. And it was just sad, because I really, really want to know what happens to them. Um, just shit. I mean, yeah, it was just great. I loved it. I think the campaign's again awesome. What I'm playing now is Nothing's Ever Written, I believe. I'm not too sure. Again, hmm, have really bad memory. Um, so that's basically the campaign. You go through these bits, you do objectives, and you win. While well, you're shooting bad guys in the face. Not bad guys, they weren't declared bad guys, they're just Germans. Yeah, most of them were Germans. And so this brings us to multiplayer. Multiplayer is a lot fast paced, I reckon, because every bullet counts. There's a lot of interesting guns, some are better better than others, others, but it just some, some of it can be really unfair. Like you're just starting out and there's this guy who's good at sniping. He sits at all the way at the back of the map, and you can't do anything about it, because if you're in a plane, he'll just shoot you out of the sky. If you run up to him, he'll just kill you by shooting you in the head or something. So you can't win. That just feels a bit cheap, but that's most multiplayer games. Um, game modes, there is normal Battlefield game modes, such as Conquest and Rush. There is a new one called... Um, operations. Operations, yes, that's the name. Operations is con conquest and rush put together. When in rush, you had to get to a point to set a bomb, or or you had to try and defend it, depending which side you were on. And conquest, where there's areas and flags around the map you have to go to and hold them down for as long as you can. It kind of works that way, and if the enemy takes the two flags or three flags, you have to retreat 
and defend the other one. So that's kind of in rush, and all the flags and areas is in conquest. And I reckon um, Russia's operations is very unique as well because when the one enemy, one side has taken all the flags, the other side has to retreat back to a, a different map. So that can be really cool and see how long they can defend for. And um, they have uh, how many attacks that they can do. Like one side can have three attacks and if everyone, if a certain amount of people die, that attack has to be retreated, then they refresh, get all the vehicles going again, and then they go for another attack. It's very cool and I like it. Another new game mode is called War Pigeons. War Pigeons is where in World War One they actually used birds to deliver messages back to HQ and it was a very fitting good job but it worked well. So in War Pigeons you have to find the, a bird around the map, you have to hold the bird for, for a certain amount of time to get the message written and then you have to release it and the enemy only has a few seconds to shoot the bird, otherwise the other team gets a point. What the fuck are you doing? Like right here, the same. Like, little pigeon, to his foot, off he goes. Back to HQ. Um, I think multiplayer is quite swell. Different maps, very different weapons, all to my an awesome bolt action rifle to a machine gun. The vehicles are awesome. There's planes. Um, no helicopters because they were invented. Invented, and you won't really need helicopters because there's not many high places because they didn't really have skyscrapers back then. So planes, you can you. Let's say you're playing operations and the attacking team is losing. The game will send like a blimp to come and help them and these actually can work quite well one of them is a massive zeppelin that can shoot planes out of the sky quite quickly by other players other on the other team, other team that can bomb them or jump down and very gruesome very awesome seeing a fall out of the sky and a big ball of fire it was great or you can get an armored tank which players can jump in, and the tank can go across the rails and destroy buildings and other players. And overall, it's just a scary thing to look at. And everyone just start throwing grenades and try to destroy the damn thing. Then you have a big battleship that can launch cannons and machine guns and really shoots planes out of the skies mostly. So it's that's quite quite cool how. Historically accurate is. I don't believe they had that many battleships back then. Even though Great Britain were the kings of the sea, and Germany being on land, it's very. Well, I don't know too much about it. I would like to learn more about it though. Um. Hmm. So I've done campaign, and I've done multiplayer. There isn't really a co-op aspect to it which would be cool but battlefield games don't really have that that's why in um black ops 3 they did in a zombie campaign which was actually quite good i thought that was awesome but i'm not, I'm not a cod fan never really was i think i will be um they s still have whoops they still have the battle packs which you can purchase with real life money to get. Um, it's only skins though. Means you can only just buy skins for your guns, and I don't really know how much they are. You get you you get given them quite a lot in the game, so there's no point to rush out and buy many of these battle crates as possible. <laughs> My tongue's not very slick today. Um, hmm. 
you can also get puzzle pieces for new melee weapons. I believe there's two. A spiked mallet and a, a machete looking thing. I mean, battle packs, I really don't care. They're not very important to me. They're just skins. I'm not all about skins. But yeah, that's Battlefield 1. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is HueyBear2104. And this is my review in Battlefield 1. Goodbye. I've got to say what to rate it. I would give this 5 stars out of 5. Because I love this game and I think it's great. Go buy it. Love it. The death. Love it. putting a great deal of trust in Zara's capabilities, but I had complete confidence that she would carry the day. <laughs>